What's up guys? Thank you for tuning into this video. Finally got another review for you. It's gonna be on this 2005 Mazda 6 station wagon. It's gonna be my full tour video. So let's go and get started. We're gonna start off per usual by checking out the exterior. Starting with these headlamps, which I think are quite attractive. I'm not sure what all these quadrants are for. I know one of them's main beam, one of them's high beam, one of them's turn signal. Not sure what this fourth one does, it might just be a dummy. The fog light is down here. You've got your rather attractive grille and front end. These wheels, these five spoke turbine style wheels. I think they're pretty good looking. I'm a fan of them. I had these on the sedan I had. And the tires are uh, 205, 205 50R17, 17-inch wheels. This car is finished in this baby blue color. You get these things in a few different colors. You get this blue, you get a darker blue, you get a red, you get a yellow, and then you can get variations of grayscale. It does have a rear trunk lid spoiler that houses the third brake light, rear wiper. This tail light is missing a chunk. <laughs> nice little subdued dual exhaust. The Mazda 6 of this generation was based on the CD3 platform from Ford, which also was the under underpinnings of the Ford Fusion. And they're good cars. And I think this thing is attractive. You get this car in three body styles, a wagon like this, a sedan, and a hatchback. Before we move inside, one thing to mention real quick, this is the key here. It's just a simple key. And the facelift of this same generation, Mazda 6, they combined the fob and the key into one key, and it was a folding key. But moving inside now, you will find a well-appointed and surprisingly well-made and sorted out interior. Got some nice soft touch plastic on the door here. Some nice soft, soft touch on the armrest. All your power switches and everything. All these switches feel nice and solid. <laughs> this one has a leather wrapped steering wheel. I'm a fan of these gauges. Got temp, tack, speed, and fuel. I do like these big gauges. You got your clock and your climate control. It is a single zone. Your vents, which on this car are a little broken, unfortunately. And going down the center control stack, this head unit design is a source of some controversy because it is not a DIN head unit, as in it's not super easy to swap a head, uh, uh, aftermarket head unit into it. But they do make kits that replace this whole piece for you to swap a new head unit into here. And this one does have a tape player. So you can put a um, you can put a tape player auxiliary adapter thing in it. And all the all the switches in the buttons all look identical. So it can be a little confusing at times. Down below you got the climate control, you got your fan speed, uh, front defrost in your different zones, and then your temperature. Like I said earlier, it's a single zone. Got your shifter for the, I believe, it is a five-speed auto. I could be wrong. I know that you can get a, a five-speed manual with this car because I had one. Got your center console, which is two-tier. Very nice. Got this cubby up here. And these cubbies break on many of them. Like, if you're looking for these things on Facebook Marketplace or something, the, these cubbies love to break on them. The whole dash is covered in a nice padded material that holds up very well to the sun and feels pretty decent. This is an attractive steering wheel. Three-spoke steering wheels are pretty attractive. Got radio controls on the left and cruise control on the right. Wiper stock. Turn signal stock. Your fog lights. 
pretty typical arrangement there. Traction control and your gauge brightness, and then a little storage cubby, which is perfect for holding an, apart an apartment complex key card, which is what I used it for. This one does have a sunroof, and a nice headliner, and a nice lighting controls for the rear passengers. You also got map lights in here. And then a glove box. And these seats, which are very good seats, impressively so. And the leather is nice and cleans up real well. Very nice seats. You also have adjustable seatbelt anchors. It's a really nice interior and these cup holders as well. And a traditional handbrake lever, which is better. And this one does have heated seats. Those were options. It really is a nice interior. I'm a fan. Checking out the back seat now. It's got the same nice leather covering back here. definitely a little tight back here both these front seats are all the way back and if you're tall like I am you better hope the front passengers are willing to move up a little bit or hope that the driver's short do get a nice armrest back here with cup holders covered in the same nice leather and you got a map pocket on the back of the front driver's seat but not on the back of the passenger seat which is interesting because presumably if you're the driver and you're putting a map back here, this is where you'd be reaching. But you don't have one back here, which is interesting. But you got the same soft touch plastic on the door here. Pretty much all the same accoutrement on the back doors here. Just space is a little tight. And then you got your overhead console for your lights and your Jesus handles. And airbags. Side curtain airbags. And then your middle seatbelt coming out of the ceiling. I do believe that the space back here is tighter than the Camry and the Accord of the same era. Moving on to the rear hatch now, where the practicality aspect of the wagon begins. You will find 33.7 cubic feet of cargo space which if you fold the rear seats, which you do with these levers right here. There we go. Expands to 60.4. Now, something that I find really interesting is, can you fit an air mattress in here? I don't think you can, but that would be cool to fit an air mattress in here and then go camping and just sleep in the car. I would enjoy doing that. And you got some, you got your, your Bose subwoofer and your spare tire under the floor here, as well as your jack equipment. And the floor is segmented into these nice compartments. And you got a little locking storage cubby over here, a little bit of storage. Same deal on the other side bit more storage it's a very practical space and there is a cargo cover and it is it, it does this car does have its cargo cover but I don't know how to install it I have no clue so it's not in here one thing I forgot to mention real quick you guys know how much I love these there is a hole to put your hand to close the hatch and you can see it. Why doesn't every car have that? Alrighty, we're driving the Mazda 6 wagon. Now, one thing to make note of right off the bat is that there is something wrong with the seat belt. Even though the seat belt is buckled in, the car doesn't like to assume that the seat belt's buckled in. So it beeps at you. So you're gonna hear the seat belt dinger and that's why. <laughs> anyway, um, I actually owned a Mazda 6 of this generation. I had a 2003 
black sedan, which other than the fact that it was black, had black leather and was a sedan, it was spec identical to this one. And I thought that was a great car. It was one of the very early videos I did just to start up on it. And because I've owned that, it means I have a lot to say about this car. Um, we'll talk about the engine first. The engine is good. This is a good engine. If you can find a, or one of these, or... If you can find one of these, or... I'm not sure if anything else came with the Duratec and a manual, but... If you can find a Duratec and a manual, do it. It's a good combination. The engine makes a lot of power and it makes that power up top which makes it really fun with the manual and the manual the gearing is good it's close and tight and it turns a lot of revs on the highway <laughs> this is my uh, first time driving an automatic one of these and so far it feels like an automatic it is a six-speed auto not a four not a five-speed and so far it's very smooth and you can knock it over into the plus and minus facade, suggest what gear to be in. It's a lot of traffic right now. I can't really floor it, but that's okay. The car itself is quiet, solid, well-made. It's a great highway car. They just mulch the miles on the highway and they're very comfortable. These seats, these are the best seats ever put in to just a regular car. They are so good. One thing I really, really miss about the one I had is how good the seats were. All right, we got some road here. I'm gonna give it some gas. Yep. Yep, it's exactly the power I remember very good yeah these are great cars if you're in the, if you're in the market and you want a good practical sedan that's also fun to drive and these things are cheap they're not expensive like the owner got this one when it had 80,000 miles on it and this one's in great shape it's got low miles and she paid five grand for this one and five grand is the most like five grand will buy you the nicest one of these that exists and this is a i would argue that this is a lot of car for five thousand dollars sedan hatchback or otherwise speaking of which i mentioned that you could get these things as a sedan a hatchback or as this wagon here um what i didn't mention is that the sedan is the best looking one and that the hatchback is by far the most elusive. I've seen maybe two of them in real life and I don't see them come up for sale very often. I'm not sure how many of them they made, but I don't think they made a lot of them. Let's see, what else is there to say? Certain things to look out for. Uh, the paint quality is not very good. If you find one of these things, especially for cheap, it's likely to be missing paint all over the place. The, wa the water pump is driven off of the cam pulley. So there is a little ancillary belt that's coming off the cam pulley that drives the water pump. That's not necessarily a problem, but it is something to note. And the benefit to that is if the belt tensioner goes out, like it did on the one I had, you'll still have a water pump. So the engine won't overheat if you try to drive it to wherever you're trying to go. Which is nice. I'm not sure why they did that. It's probably just a packaging issue. But it is what it is. And with that, I have run out of things to say, so it's going to do it for this video. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Be sure to stay tuned, I'll have more videos to come, hopefully. I'm going to try to film more videos.
you like what you saw here, please subscribe. And I will catch you in the next video. Take care. Thanks for watching.